Repatriation of the Rohingyas is not about general city of the big Jan countries. It is their birthright to get back to their homeland where they were born, raised, played, and they were finally persecuted back in 2017, uh, what has been termed as ethnic cleansing by the Kofi Annan Commission. And the United Nations should actively assist the Rohingyas to get back uh, their citizenship right over there. And there, uh, there are five stakeholders who are uh, directly related to this process uh, of repatriation. That is the Rohingyas, the hosting country Bangladesh, Myanmar, at the same time United Nations and USA, UK. On the other hand, it's Russia and China block. And since uh, you all know that Myanmar is uh, dependent, largely dependent on China in many issues. So if China and Russia, they want this repatriation as early as possible, then there is a feasibility of repatriating those Rohingyas within two years or one year. Otherwise, if Russia and China, they are not agreed to repatriate them as soon as possible, then uh, the entire situation will be condensed more. And every stakeholder has a responsibility to, to repatriate them. It's not the solo job of Bangladesh. And Bangladesh has already faced some serious detriment or uh, some detrimental effects of this crisis. So everybody should come up. And Myanmar has to deal with uh, another thing that is the ultra Buddhist uh, centric nationalism. Uh, if they repatriate or if they accept the repatriation of the Rohingyas and if they allow them to get back over there, then they will possibly face another backlash of anti-government sentiment. Uh, you understand because Rohing, uh, Rohingyas were persecuted uh, on different grounds and one of the strongest ground was Rohingyas are Muslims and they are from Bangladesh. Uh, they consider this kind of stuff. So uh, the Myanmar government, they are also uh, in some trouble, I think. Uh, at the same time, they have the leverage of having a huge land for their uh, different development projects. And uh, from commentators, we heard that uh, they have some joint partnership with China to build over some development projects where they were driven out, they were persecuted, the Rohingyas, uh, I said. And when we interviewed the Rohingyas back in 2019 as part of my research, and they all of them, now, I, uh, we interviewed 30 Rohingyas, including men and women, and they, everyone, everyone expressed their concern over, uh, over their repatriation because uh, they said if they uh, get back to their homeland, then what will they eat? How will they stay? Who will take care of their security? This kind of questions came up. And uh, from, uh, from, the, uh, from my observation, I want to say to the donor agencies, NGOs, and international community that please accelerate the process of the Rohingya repatriation. Don't always try to blame Bangladesh that uh, why Bangladesh is uh, sending 0.1 million, uh, which is just 10% of the total Rohingya population to uh, Bhashanchar, which is a newly built, uh, very, very nice place, I, uh, according to the BBC uh, report or BBC documentary that has been released last month so uh, i urge the international community to accelerate the repatriation to uh, held responsible myanmar for the persecution on them and uh, one thing that should be made clear if you deny the justice it will be buried justice will be buried and history will make you accountable for you uh, you did as well it's not only uh, that the myanmar army uh, drove them away they persecuted the rohingyas if you don't act actively as a human being history will make you accountable why didn't we take uh, necessary uh, steps to repatriate them because it's their right it's their birthright so we don't have any right to violate their rights and uh, one thing I want to make uh, make you clear that Bangladesh is a small country in terms of land and uh, it has some re uh, it has limited resources. So if the international community, they don't help Bangladesh, helping is not just giving some money. Even the donor agencies are uh, the uh, donor countries. You are, you are also facing uh, some serious crisis regarding collecting this amount of money uh, so that we can feed more than one million Rohingyas in Cox's Bajar, Bangladesh. So this is my earnest request to all of you to accelerate uh, this repatriation process. And uh, I hope 
under the United Nations umbrella, every country will come up, China, Russia, UK, USA, and uh, international organizations, NGOs, they will come up uh, and uh, it will be a re restoration uh, of their property over there. They uh, will require a safe land where they can stay, where they can uh, cultivate, where they can get food, their medication. And uh, lastly, uh, international community should at least thank Bangladesh for hosting such a big number uh, of Rohingya refugees. Everyone is telling, uh, okay, Bangladesh, uh, uh, Bangladesh has uh, given them shelter. That's well, but why did Bangladesh uh, is very adamant to uh, send uh, 100,000 people to Bhashanjar? Uh, so stop doing kind of this kind of stuff. Uh, and uh, with a warm heart, I tell you, uh, Rohingyas should not be the weapon of business for anyone for any donor agencies, for any NGOs, for any community. They are human beings, treat them as human beings. And uh, I must thank uh, YPF for arranging such type of talk. And uh, I think this kind of uh, talk will be an ice breaking. And why I was a bit harsh to the international community today, because it's already been three years and no considerable advancement has been evident. Uh, regarding the repatriation and I hope the international community uh, especially USA UK they are doing fantastic job even there was a parliamentary debate a uh, few days back so they are doing a uh, fantastic job I thank UK USA for their efforts but your efforts is not enough so you should increase your efforts bring China and Russia in the policy talk and I think if you cannot ensure the uh, uh, inclusion of China and Russia in the policy talks, this problem will not be solved. Thank you very much.